put up my slides and hopefully you can all see those. Well, it's a, a real pleasure to be speaking to you uh, here from Millfield today. It's um, lovely weather actually here. It's, it's a lovely sunny uh, day. Uh, we've enjoyed a, 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 a extended summer sunshine and it's been really super to see so many of our pupils back here uh, at school um, enjoying classes. We're pretty much full with all our pupils here um, and in fact record numbers. So that's been super. And we've really appreciated our international families who have uh, traveled uh, across. We understand it's been a difficult period of time but in the same way as what Tessa and Simon will have been saying, um, it's been nothing more pleasing for us than to see those pupils back with us uh, and welcoming everybody uh, from around the world. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, Millfield. And as I go through this slideshow, uh, some of which will be similar for format to what Simon was saying uh, and tell you a bit about the school. Well, we are also in the southwest. Millfield is just below Bath and Bristol uh, in a beautiful campus. Uh, we're not far from airports, easy reach, but as a full boarding school, we feel it's important to be somewhere where there's a good campus and a basis for uh, our students to join us. We have two schools. There is Millfield, which uh, goes from 13 to 18 as a senior school, and we have a prep school, same as Cheltenham, which goes up to the age of 13. And we're cited by the town of Street, unusual name for a, a town, but also uh, near Glastonbury. And Glastonbury is a small town just by a tor. It's a natural forming hill. And this is the region where we are. And you'll see we have several campuses and several different locations for some of our houses and boarding areas as well. Uh, so we have a very extensive site, 250 acres. There's a actual view of the um, prep school looking up towards Glastonbury Tor. So we're blessed with great facilities and uh, lovely green countryside. And there's an aerial shot, just a part of the compass of Millfield itself. We're 250 acres, uh, which are very extensive uh, and say we've got great facilities within those. So a little bit about the history of the school. We were founded in 1935 and the first headmaster, Jack Mayer, arrived with six Indian princes. Uh, these uh, boys came with him and his wife. And he grew the school from that beginning. So we've always had international pupils. We're very much a British school, but we've always had that DNA of pupils who have come from overseas. And over time, the school has developed both in terms of its facilities, but also in terms of its size. We're now the largest co-ed boarding school in the UK with 1,270 pupils aged 13 to 18. And we have about 350 at the prep school up to the age of 13. Um, we have very small classes. Our average class size are just 12 students, maximum about 14 or 15. So although we're a big school, we're a small school, and you can see from our very first pupils when they, they, they came with us and grew um, to the size of school we are presently. Our values, um, we always like a bit like uh, the Cheltenham, as Simon's just finishing off there, is uh, very similar in the sense of what we're looking for is character. So we're looking for people to be brilliant, be challengers, be curious, be kind and be you. The headmaster Gavin Horgan often says we're looking for disruptors, people who are going to think differently and are going to actually be able to apply themselves in a range of different contexts. So this is what we're about. We're wanting people to look after each other, but also to think for themselves. And this sort of foundation has been something that we've carried on right the way through our, our years. This focus on the individual, making sure our teaching and tutoring is of the highest class and provide a wide range of subjects and fantastic facilities. Now, one of the key features of us is we are a full boarding school. That means that all of our boarders are resident here seven days a week. We don't have weekly or flexi boarding. Um, we're very much a boarding school. And as you'll see from these stats, 80% of our boarders are British, 20% international, and our international pupils come from 70 different countries. So it's a wide range on, of where people are from. Our largest number of international pupils last year, we had about 31 from Kenya and about 30 from Thailand. Um, so we have a good number of uh, Thai pupils, but again, no nationality more than about 30. So it's a good spread. Um, and we have pupils ranging between all different age groups going right the way through the school. Now, of our 80% British, 20% are actually British living overseas. So we have some of those in our Thai number, 
who are actually British citizens living in Bangkok or elsewhere. Um, if you add it all together, we have about 500 pupils, 250 of those are British, 250 of those are international, and that would make a plain load of our pupils. So we like this diversity, it's really important to us, and we very much appreciate where our pupils come from. And in a similar way, uh, as Simon said, we have an international society, um, and we, we value the fact we have students from 250 different countries. Now, obviously, COVID has been on everyone's mind. Um, we've put in an awful lot of time in terms of our communication and planning with our parents. Uh, we've had lots of FAQs documents, frequently asked questions. We've had a quarantine where we had about 100 students able to quarantine before term started. And we've put in all the measures you'd expect. So we're operating pretty much as normal. I'd say about 85% as normal, but we've got extra measures in terms of the way the lunch operates. In the dining hall, we're taking longer about that. It's spread. There's lots of cleaning going through there all the time. Uh, same for supper and breakfast. And also in terms of the actual classrooms, we've put in, say, place good, sensible measures about making sure that um, there is less chance of transmission. Um, and as I said, we, we've been delighted that nearly all of our uh, pupils have returned. Uh, we have no boarding spaces at all free. Um, and that's a wonderful thing to have. So we're also making sure that with our boarders, because they have company at weekends, we're able to maintain and have our students in for the next half of this term. So we aren't having any exits. They're like leave weekends. In some schools, you have to go. We aren't doing that. We're allowing our students to stay. We've got a vibrant program of activities and things going on over the weekends. And your house of 60 will be fully occupied. And then everyone will be in the house with them. So in half term, we're also allowing students to stay over half term if they wish. So they're allowed to, uh, to stay for those two weeks if they can't travel back to their countries. So pastoral care obviously is very important uh, in a full boarding school. So our prep school head mistress, Mr. Shirley Shaler, and these are some of the images from our younger end. This is our, our prep school um, and our boarding houses. The pupils in these houses number about 30 in a house. Um, and that rises in the senior school to about between 40 and 60 in a house. Um, and they have rooms of three or four at a younger age. And then they go up to being slightly smaller, rooms of two as you get older and then a single in your final year. And the facilities are great. Very much important about these extra weekend activities, particularly when they're younger. So lots of compulsory things, but they're all fun. So uh, it's very much about that enthusiasm of getting to know each other, meeting each other and finding commonality of friends. That's really important to us. We also offer some EAL classes, English as an additional language, uh, in order to make sure that our students are fully integrated into the school. At a younger age, we'll have a minimum expectation of, of language ability. But we have one girl, Sarah, who was Thai, who joined us in year nine. Um, she actually was now living in the UK uh, with her mother and a British father. And uh, her English was lower, but she absolutely integrated. And I was talking to her just the other day, and her English was coming on. You'd hardly know uh, that it only been about nine months since she'd been in the school. So it's amazing how fast people will quickly pick up. Um, schools like Bishopstro, we have used as well, which are very good students whose English is very weaker, very much weaker, but um, and I fully recommend them as a, a pre-sessional group if your English is low, but we can actually have um, students join us uh, from the ages, certainly in our prep school, where their English is lower, and then a certain level for the age of 13 and upwards. Um, obviously, we do a full curriculum. This again is our prep school, um, so they'll be taking a wide range of all the subjects they'll follow and the academic, it's also important, of course, what they seem to do outside of the classroom. We'll come back to that. But they'll be following a full and integrated program. And we'd like to do that with the majority of our English as additional language students who are joining us. We also became quite proficient at remote learning. Now, luckily, we're not having to do much of that. But if we do need to go back into perhaps a group or a bubble that goes back to the boarding house, if there is any possibility of a suspected case, We've had none of those at all, no actual kind of cases, but should it happen, we can deliver some lessons remotely. Um, now, at the prep school, they delivered in one half a term over 5,000 lessons remotely. I think we've progressed more in about three months than we have in five years of uh, the way in which we teach remotely. So this has been a constant theme 
uh, we adapted. We're a Wi-Fi school in using iPads. So we are very used to having students bring remote learning into classrooms. We've done that for 10 years and our teaching staff were able to quite quickly flick into a method of communicating with the uh, students remotely. Uh, so whilst we hope that won't return, I don't think it will. All the indicators are from the British government that they want the very last thing to happen would be a lockdown or closing of schools. So I don't think that will occur. Um, but at the very worst, we just keep on teaching remotely or through our boarding houses. They'll just be based there rather than class. In our first year at Millfield, we have a programme called Nine at Millfield. So when you're 13 years old in a senior school, you can be part of this group called Nine at Millfield. There are a series of different houses and they're grouped together in the centre of the school. It enables to have a base, a starting point, a foundation. Uh, the, it's all age appropriate in the care that they receive. And so it's very much aimed at being for students who are making that transition from a prep school to a larger school. Uh, they'll be doing lots of activities at the weekends. They try all the subjects and then they'll choose what they take for GCSE at that point. And our curriculum is very wide and balanced and broad. Uh, typically you'll do um, about 10 GC 9 to 10 GCSEs with a wide range of subjects in offer. Most students for sixth form will do A-levels. We have a limited number of VTEC courses, um, but essentially students will choose from their sort of year nine and year 10 entry points um, what they're going to follow. Now, we do have the ability to take quite a few students into year 10. We take about 200 in year nine. We take about 50 students into year 10 and we take 130 into the lower sixth. That's because in our year nine houses were for the first year and then we move to senior houses for the next four years. So that enables our year 10 students to join fresh in a house uh, with some of our existing pupils. It's new for everybody. So the majority of those year 10 joiners uh, will either come from parts of the UK or some often internationally as well. And the sixth form, we grow the school, we get bigger. So the year group goes just over 300 uh, in the sixth form. And uh, as I said, they'll be joining students from many different parts of the world and across the UK. Just mentioning about results, um, we're bigger than many other schools, uh, as indicated. So we often look at our top 100 pupils results. And for GCC last year, they were 96 percent. That's actually gone up to 97, 98 percent this year. Um, and we have a very high success rate in those achievements. And also for our A-levels, I'm going to go on to that one while I'm talking about it, where they achieved last year, we achieved 94 uh, percent A star to B for our top 100 pupils which again is a very high percentage uh, and represents again the uh, strong academic ability. Our sixth form courses, you see different pathways of study. Uh, I said the majority of our students will study three A-levels. Some also do three A-levels um, and pre-U. Uh, a few do four A-levels, 17%, 66% three A-levels, and then some will take a BTEC, which is a more practical sort of course. And we offer those in business and enterprise, uh, in sport and art. At universities and colleges, we have a good number that go on to Russell Group uh, and top universities. Uh, we have a number gone to US universities. Um, we have a great breadth and again a year group of nearly 270 um, that go to a wide range of universities, but good achievement of high level. And the same way uh, which many schools will offer individual um, careers advice. We have a dedicated careers advice centre. We also um, run SATs. So we have a number of our American universities, about um, 30, 40 a year, have gone to a US university. Some of those who've achieved a scholarship or elsewhere um, through sport or other areas. And like in so many British boarding schools, the co curricular side is very important. Um, it's really part of our ethos that we're not just about. Uh, the academic. Academic is the most important part of the school, be in no doubt. That's where you'll spend 70% of your time in your lessons, and it's certainly uh, what you'll measure the, the outcome of. But you need a balance. And I think the reason why British boarding schools have been so successful over the years is recognising that we're educating the whole person. It's not just about one aspect. We're looking at bringing people in all their confidence, in terms of their trying different things, their esteem, and also their ability to go out into the wider world as a rounded young person 
who's developed and made the most of their talents. So we'll be pushing things like co-curricula or our activity programs. You can see a list of just a few of those, over 100 that we offer. And these will be run in and around the school curriculum. So it's very important that they'll be taking part maybe first thing in the morning or later on during the day. And just looking at some of this range of uh, things we have here, very briefly, the, you've got some music, fantastic music curriculum and dance and our art and our drama. All of these may occur at lunch times or sessions later on in the afternoon. Many of these will occur at different times of the day. And then we have our main sports that we would offer as well, which we have 27 different sports. And Millfield is renowned for much of its sports offer, which is fantastic and the range of sports that we offer as well. And we've had great success in that. We've had a number of Olympians over the years, um, and we like that, that's fantastic. But not everybody at Millfield is an Olympian. Not everybody at Millfield is gonna play in the first team of their sport, and we like that as well. It's about sport for all, activity for all. What we're very keen to ensure is that our students will have the chance to go out, have a break from their academics, find something that they enjoy and take it as far as they can. And who knows, maybe you'll be one of those who will go on to achieve something uh, like some of our students have done so here. And I think one of the best ways of measuring success is to try and look um, at your community of Old Millfieldians. So we're very lucky, we have 22,000 in a network right around the world. We're very lucky, we have a distinguished uh, alumni, uh, particularly in Thailand and we very much value that distinguished and important uh, link that we have had with Thailand for many, many years. Um, and that often is that word of mouth, that recommendation um, and an awareness of Millfield that helps the younger generation through. We travel normally uh, at least once or twice a year. And I'm visiting my time when I would normally go to Thailand, probably around end of September. And we hope that soon we'll be able to resurrect those trips and be able to continue to link. Because when we host an event, what we'll do is have some of our former pupils, our alumni meeting as well with our prospective pupils. And we very much value all of those people that we get to see. So in short, I'd just like to sum more filled up because often people um, will sometimes look at a school and they'll base their um, decision making upon grades or facilities. And all of those are important to look at, absolutely. I think if you are traveling overseas, then certainly the number of boarders is very important. Uh, are they gonna have company at weekends? Are they gonna be able to make friends? Are they gonna be able to find someone who will help them settle and enable them to feel at ease? Because if you feel at ease in a community, if you feel comfortable around other people, then you almost certainly flourish. And what we go out of our way at Millfield to do is to make sure that wherever anyone comes is that we find you some friendships, we find you some activities to be doing, we want to stretch you academically, or we want to set you off on a path where you'll be able to quickly and easily move on into your way to world, a more confident person and someone who's maybe discovered a few talents, maybe they've been challenged in some directions, maybe you put a tent up, something you've never done before, gone camping, ridden a horse. All of those are valuable, things that you may never have achieved in the previous way. And that allied with the friendships you make at school are some of the most important things. Someone once told me that whilst they can't remember all the information their teachers imparted and taught them at school, they remember how those people made them feel. And I think that's something we very much value. It's how you are made to feel when you're at school. We appreciate our links with Thailand. Um, it's been super to be able to talk to you um, this evening. I look forward to Sophie speaking to some other families individually uh, when we have the chance to um, meet later in October and also for our next journey uh, to go. But I think we're ahead of schedule and at that point, Sue, I'll hand back to you. Thank you.